नमस्कार आई एम गोइंग टू प्रेजेंट द ओवरव्यू ऑफ बियर्ड हार्वेस्टिंग दिस स्टॉक वॉज गिवन लास्ट ईयर इन मुंबई ड्यूरिंग हेयर कॉन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी दिस इज द एनुअल कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑफ एसोसिएशन ऑफ हेयर रिस्टोरेशन सर्जन ऑफ इंडिया सो आई हैव गॉट ऑल दीज पब्लिकेशंस research published my book and i have been co-author in another book and written chapters for many other book related to hair restoration the human body is said to have 5 millions of hair except for the scalp hair most of body hair is villous to begin with but a proportion of these hair have androgen sensitivity and they become terminal hair and they are called as androgenetic hair around the puberty this you can so see how good the beard is and this is an excellent source of donor hair follicle the body hair characteristics is the body hair are slow to grow scalp hair grows at a speed of 0.37 0.44 mm per day while the body hair grows approximately at 0.27 mm per day thickness they are thinner except the beard like chest hair abdominal hair and the hair from the extremities are thinner than the scalp but the beard hair are more coarse thicker and curly recipient influence the acquired length tommy hoang has given a concept that when you implant them in the scalp area they get the length but the thickness remains the same the follicle unit most of them are single follicle units while in the scalp if we take average then we find 1 is to 2 ratio of multifollicular unit the angle of body hair is more acute like they are more closer to the skin that is the meaning of acute while the scalp hair has got some angle so when the angle is acute it makes a challenge in harvesting these follicles because you have to keep your punch at that level so that you can harvest them take them out without without cutting them depth yes they lies more superficially than the scalp hair the variation in the length of the cycle if we go the longest anagen phase is the of the scalp and the beard means they have got the long anagen means the more growing period of the scalp and the beard hair is while the other has got the shorter anagen period eyebrow has got the shortest longest telogen is of extremities and shortest telogen is of the beard that is the region you shave and next day again you get the hair and many of the person do shaving every day that is the meaning of shorter telogen and the longer anagen scalp 85 to 90% hairs are in anagen and 10 to 15% are in telogen only so means most of the hair with follicle when you are harvesting they are in anagen phase means they are in growing phase while beard has got only 70% means you extract 100 beard or follicle beard hair follicle 70% are in anagen while 30% approximately are in telogen <laughs> extremities have got further less only just 20% anagen and 80% telogen eyebrows has, are only 10% in anagen chest and back are 30% in anagen so we should understand that the anagen hair in the extremities is much much less this is very important that you know and you must explain to the patient 
that supposedly if you implant 100 hair follicle and they all are surviving but on the scalp only few hair follicle will be shown then most of the are in telogen stage then other comes in anagen then they go in telogen so the effective number of hair on the surface is less when you have done harvesting from the extremities this is important for the surgeon that he understand this cycle and also we need to explain to the patient then the density the lowest density is in the eyebrows why highest density is formed in the scalp and the beard the variation in the follicle length the shortest follicle upper lip and the eyebrows and the longest follicles are in the scalp pubic region and the beard means the length of the follicle which is inside the skin so scalp pubic and beard hair follicles are little longer than the upper lip and the eyebrows then the what are the surgical challenges for a surgeon during harvesting the body hair follicles are as i said before they are at an acute angle so harvesting is difficult they lies more superficially in collagenous dermis unlike the scalp hair which floats in this fat absent bony support and bulky soft tissue while the scalp has got total the scalp hair follicles are sitting on a hard bone that is the skull while most of the body hairs are in the soft tissue like this is soft tissue so no bony support is there no bony support is there but here is the bony support so you need to understand when you do the harvesting you need something to sit on something to have the counter pressure so in the body hair that bony support is missing like in abdomen there is no bony support at all so these are the few challenges which the surgeon faces during the harvesting of the body hair follicles greatly variable direction and the pattern of body hair body hair pattern and the direction changes it is not consistent if you see in the scalp donor hair follicle they are almost down laterally they go straight laterally but in the chest beard you see lot of walls direction changes very frequently so every time when you are engaging the hair you need to keep on changing the angle of your engagement direction of your engagement so surgeon has to follow whatever the angle and direction of hair is and which is variable in body hair follicles another thing is difficult position when you are harvesting from the beard it is difficult you have to extend the neck of the patient many times the neck is short patient is fatty then the chest and neck we have seen many times you the neck is not visible so when you are harvesting from the shadow area then it is difficult to engage and there are chances of difficulty in harvesting and more transaction will be then the anesthesia because we are extracting from the large area so nerve block in body here doesn't work rather you give a regional regional block or tumescent anesthesia tumescent is more effective in harvesting of the body hair rather than in nerve block anesthesia now we go on clinical application as a secondary procedure to enhance the cosmetic density means the scalp hair follicles are limited in number while the demand of the recipient area is much high for that to combat that or to cover up the deficit of scalp donor hair follicle supply and recipient area demand you can harvest the body hair follicle 
to enhance the density and the cosmetic density as well. As a primary procedure can also be done, I have introduced this concept that as a combination with the scalp hair follicle, the body hair follicle during the first procedure can be done because we need more scalp hair follicle in the future when we are going to cover other more important aesthetic area. Poor scalp donor area conditions such as the exhausted because of the over harvesting. Supposedly, patient has undergone surgery and the previous surgeon has already exhausted whatever the cause is, scalp donor area and you need more number of hair follicle to cover up the existing baldness and or to fill up or to cover the scalp show means the low density which was given previously and the patient wants more. In those conditions also the body hair follicle are a rich source. Donor forming, this is an important word for poor cosmetic density of over harvested scalp donor area. Please understand this, what is the donor forming? Donor forming means there are the two indication of is supposingly the previous surgery has exhausted all the donor scalp area. Donor area is looking poor and scalp show is more in the donor area. So what is the answer for that? The answer for that area to cover is only and only the body hair. You can use from the tarso, you can use from beard or other area. Number one. Number two, when the scalp density demand is more, when the scalp needs more coverage, at that time you can do over harvesting of the scalp donor area, but you replace those hair by using the body hair and transplant them the scalp donor area. So this, this is a perfect donor farming word, perfect use. You are taking them more physiological hair to cover up the aesthetic area, but the deficit created in the donor area will be covered by taking donor hair from the other part of the body. So this you must understand also. Articia, when many times when we see the patient, there is a congenital absence right from birth. There is absence of hair on the beard, mustaches and many cases you may be seeing this is a patch right from birth. Sometimes you may get confused with alopecia irida. But the patient gives you history that this bald patch is not recent development but this bald patch is right from birth or they will say they have never seen hair growing in this area. So atrichia we call is atrichia and you can use the body hair from the same area, nearby area and implant in that area. So you, they are more physiological and covering the better, giving the better uh, cosmetic appearance. The advantage of beard now I explain you, they are the thickest, curly and gives better visual density. They have got, as I explained, shorter telogen and longer anagen, means they grow very fast. They are slow to grey. Of course, do they grey? They become white, but slow to become white or grey. <laughs> Growth is an androgen dependent. See, this is very important. Testosterone converting into DHT under the effect of type 2 alpha reductase, these hair fall. While the growth of the body hair is androgen dependent, many times patient, rather I will say most of the patients are reluctant in taking the finasteride. So in that case, these hair has got a great role. If you implant them, their growth is androgen dependent and they are going to grow normally without any other intervention. Now let's come on the beard, preoperative preparation of the beard, what you do, 
the shaving of these beard hair is done three days prior so during last three days whatever the hair are growing they all are in anagen stage or anagen phase means they are in growing phase and on the day of surgery again you shave them and keep length of 1.5 to 2 mm for engagement of your punch if they are white means the gray you dye them just before doing the harvesting but it is important after dyeing that you clean the area properly so no dye on the surface remains that is the important caution now we come to the beer donor area zone from where we can harvest means you can see in this picture peri oral area around means this area angle of the mouth and this goatee area just below that area this is the area shown one two three is a contraindication for aesthetic appearance then another is is relative contraindication is sideburn sideburn means at least you can harvest below the zygomatic arch but don't go above or because these are needed for the styling but some still uses this they extract out some because sometimes the density is more than you are liberty to take them out even from but preferably don't take the most preferred area for the beard donor hair harvesting is your shadow area shadow area is the most one of course you can extract from this area also over the masseter muscle area now how to give the anesthesia i use always the local jelly prilox gel one hour before mostly sometime the better jellies are available and they show effect within 45 minutes but i keep them preferably in an hour spread the jelly to the area which you have marked for harvesting apply the jelly and then put a polythene film which comes usually with the packet of the local jelly or you can use the food wrap plastic wraps are there which you can apply here that's what we do mostly and then tumescence anesthesia is more effective than the ring block but we give ring block we give the metal nerve block then all around the ring block and then the tumescence anesthesia taking care of the overall dose of anesthetic agent it is very important that you take all the precaution to reduce the pain of infiltration of local anesthesia for that you use fine needle small smaller needle means usually 30 or 31 gauge needle or insulin needle you can use you apply ice pack just before doing the infiltration and you use a good quality of vibrator near the site of injection now you see all the step of beard harvesting this is the patient we are keeping neck in extension and first the shaving as i said desired desired length of hair for engagement is 1.5 to 2 mm mark the donor area from where you are going to harvest you can divide it the sections and then you apply the prilox gel spread it properly and then apply a polythene film which comes usually along with this is a silicon cushion we use it and i usually give metazolam iv anesthesia but one should be very careful in using it watch for the tongue fall usually it is not there but you must know what is done for also so first ring block using this 30 gauge needle all around use the good quality of vibrator be careful by giving this anesthesia you don't inject in the vessels because this area is very rich has got many vessels 
running underneath the skin. But if fall is better, you just check and then you check. Check and you check. Check and you check. That's a safer way. And when you are in this area, jugular and <coughs> carotid area, you must always be cautious, be cautious. Otherwise, if you go in the carotid artery or jugular, then there can be bleeding and you will be in trouble in the operating table. During the entire procedure, you must monitor the parameters. We have got the multi-para and it's our habit that we monitor during the beard harvesting so to check the special dots in the world. We are the two surgeons, so two surgeons are harvesting on left and right side. Myself and Dr. Seema. Dr. Seema is right-handed and I have left-handed. So it's a good combination and if you have opportunity, you must use because you are reducing the overall harvesting time because patient is in a very awkward position when he gets tired when you plan for harvesting 2000 or 2500 or follicle. Although I advise you to the novice surgeon plan 1000 hair follicle from beard at the most initial stages when you become more and more trained then gradually increase the number. The removal of means the extraction of dissected hair follicle should be very careful. Follow the two forceps technique. Keep another forceps ready if in case it is needed and do not do the avulsion. Means take them out very gently, softly because if you provide a jerk or you are rough in handling the de-sheathing will take place. These are the beautiful hair follicles. They all are intact. This is the area and you must do homogeneous extraction. Don't do from one area. This we use plasma as a graft holding solution that provide 3 d fibrin scaffold because these hair follicles are ischemia sensitive and the trauma sensitive. So you must be very careful in handling these. The caution is thicker caliber beard hair should not be transplanted in the hairline and the temple region. Mix beard hair follicle with the scalp or you can mix them with the other body follicle if scalp hair follicles are not there. Use sharp, rather I we use ultra sharp coal 0.7 mm punch or you can use 0.7 to 0.8 mm punch. Do not forget to replace them if you notice that they become blunt. We as a routine do not use one punch more than three times. If you use ultra sharp, the frictional injury will be less and the chances of hypopigmentation will be much, much less. These are the surgical pulse. As I said, the body hair harvesting gives a challenge of angle and the absence of bony support. So you can glide. This you glide the skin, shadow skin over the edge of mandible like this and like this to get the bony support. Stretch the skin in between your two fingers, thumb and index. As much as you stretch it, the whole size will be smaller. So that's again another thing in by stretching you can alter the angle. You can also alter the angle, the angle which is more acute. You can make more open up or obtuse bus just by giving more pressure by the thumb or by the another index finger. So these are the few important surgical pulse. Another thing is when you engage, you engage the epidermal blush. There are the two advantages of it. One is when the epidermal blush you are engaging, you are ensuring that you are harvesting the hair follicle which is in the anagen stage. Number thing is when the angle of the hair, when it ejects out, come out from the skin, it slightly differs than the angle which it follow in the dermis, epidermis and subcutaneous tissue. So there is a slight change. So if you are engaging the epidermal blush, you are exactly following the intradermal angle of the follicle 
so the chances of transaction greatly greatly reduce i tell you you will not transact you will not transact take it granted you will not transact if you are able to engage the epitermal flash and for that you must use a good quality with high magnification magnifying loop at least 4.5x do not go much deep because they lie superficially do not go deeper than 2 mm 2 mm is sufficient enough to score them and they just pop out like this how beautiful they looks the healing is fast need not to worry about the healing usually there no infection they heal very fast you and few of my patient do shaving one of the next day the scar size is smaller if you are using ultra sharp punch this is one case in which we did the beard hair grafting five months result reasonable coverage this a trichia patient it was not having the mustaches and loss in the beard area we did we use hair from the shadow area and implanted and you can see they looks all same this is another lip scar we harvested again from the beard and we covered this a cleft lip scar he is so happy even the most beautiful surgery means aesthetic scar is a scar and there is no hair in the scar so they looks so it is good to do hair transplant in the scar to camouflage complication there can be accidental injury to the facial nerve if you are not careful there can be injury to the major vessels if you are not careful another more important complication is ingrown hair or the cyst that is common if you are taking out the hair follicle and you leave the sheath inside then there are very high chances of formation of cyst or the folliculitis then the planning of hair follicle which you can see in my other videos how this is the my paper and my technique which has been published in the international forum and journal of cutaneous surgery in the next my video you will see how intelligently you must do combination of scalp hair and the body hair or beard hair to have the perfect result and this is the planning these are my few result just to show you but i am not giving you the detail of it this is a combination of scalp and beard hair scalp and beard hair high grade of baldness they look quite aesthetic good density higher coverage so body hair or beard hair follicles are good source of extra scalp donor hair because of its curl and thickness the visual enhancement of the density is good and their growth is endogen dependent which is a great advantage thank you thank you very much if you have any question you can write me on email my email address is anilgarg61 at the rate yahoo.com or you can take my contacts from the website thank you again thank you for listening Bye.